Last night, I was browsing through the pay-per-view movie menu and I saw a film, The Green Knight. And I thought, oh, this is gonna be good. I read a, just a short bit of the description of the movie. I didn't even wanna read any more. I didn't wanna watch the preview. I knew I wanted to watch it. I just watched the whole movie. I thought it was wonderful. And in this video, I wanna talk about why. There's really two main reasons. One is because it's, it's a totally popular movie just released and most recently produced, very well made. And also, the other reason I wanna talk about this is because it's based on this book called Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. Now, the really interesting thing about this book is that it's one of the oldest masterpieces in the English language. It was published by an unknown author back in the 1300s. So like seven or 800 years ago, which is huge. And it's, it's one of the most complete and intact original manuscripts from that time with a tale of uh, King Arthur and his bride, Lady Guinevere, and the Knights in the Round Table. So just that right there, I was hooked. I read this book many years ago in college, and then when I saw the movie, I thought, oh, this is great. I just want to watch this. So there are several things I'd like to talk to you about uh, regarding the movie itself, kind of break that down a little bit. Again, no spoilers, and then talk about the book a little bit. So the movie. The movie is really well made. It's now I said it's like King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table, so maybe you're thinking like, you know, uh, the Lord of the Rings and Game of Thrones type of, you know, swashbuckling action with knights on horses and jousting and that kind of thing. It's not entirely like that. It's more like an Arthurian romance, which means you have these knights and they're all brave and honorable and they are at court with the king and they live in Camelot, the city there, and there is a body life. I mean, there's definitely uh, brothels and a lot of drinking, and but the knights are these kind of honorable men of the round table and they're legends. They're like the, you know, the Spider-Man and the um, Iron Man and the Superman of the, of the Middle Ages, right? And they, they don't fly and shoot webs and, <laughs> and uh, you know, do magic and things like that. But, but they have all this like kind of mystical power. You know, there's all of these high ideals that they live by. And there is a fair bit of, you know, uh, violence and, and um, you know, fighting and killing each other and that sort of thing. But it's, it's written on this kind of other level of, of, you have to understand the medieval times. You know, many people are poor. Uh, there's, you know, very superstitious, uh, lots of religion. Uh, beliefs and things like that um, and uh, you know kind of some backward thinking but then the knights and King Arthur are these sort of higher beings you know they're they're these uh, striving per, for perfection type individuals they believe in um, you know being good and being loyal and being courageous and uh, they really believe in going on a, on a quest they believe in uh, chivalry which is like a lot of respect for women and do anything that they're asked to protect, um, you know, the people and, and especially protect women. So there's all these kind of things at play in the story. But in the movie, it's just really well done. I mean, just visually, it's really compelling. Every scene, you're just like, wow, what's happening now? You've got this, uh, there's two major kind of plots going on in the movie. One of them is uh, called a beheading game where like one person gets to take a whack at the other person's neck and then uh, they get to return the favor <laughs> if you live. And, uh, but it's, it's very mystical and it's very supernatural at the same time. So I'm uh, not gonna give away that part of the plot, but, but that's one of the main things playing out throughout the movie is what's called a beheading game. And the other main kind of plot that's playing out is this thing called an exchange of winnings, which is, it's very middle-aged kind of thing, but it's, it's like, Two men agree, like, I'll give you whatever I win today, and you give me whatever you win. And it's these two kind of plots put together that really carry the whole movie through with a lot of uh, just kind of artistic uh, photography and very kind of like sort of 
weird changes of action and a lot of kind of panning around at the scenery. Um, you know, keep in mind, this is supposed to be set in, in 1300s England. So it's, it's really remote, you know, it's, it's just thick woods and, and kind of traveling bands of, 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 of robbers and stuff. And, and then you've got, uh, this, this guy, he's Sir Gawain. He's not even really a knight yet because he's a young guy and he's trying to make his mark. You know, he's trying to impress King Arthur who happens to be his uncle. So he, he accepts this challenge in the beheading game. And then he has to go out on this quest and he spends days and days like out in the forest and he comes across like a fox that's very weird and mystical, uh, a woman who, who has been beheaded and you're like, what, what's this all about? He also uh, comes across a, a uh, castle that's out in the forest on the, on the side of a mountain and he ends up having this uh, exchange of winnings um, kind of game going on with the, with the, uh, the lord of the, of the castle. And, and there's, there's a lot of kind of like this sexual kind of um, undertones in, in throughout, the, throughout the movie and throughout the story. The, um, to give you an example, the, uh, the main story of this exchange of winnings, what it, what it involves is, is the master of the castle tells Sir Gawain, he says, I'm going to go hunting and you stay here in the castle with my wife. <laughs> and whatever I get out there while I'm hunting, you will, uh, ex I'll exchange it with you for whatever you get here in the castle with my wife. <laughs> so you have to kind of like see like, okay, what's going on here really? You know, what is, okay, we understand like the, the Lord of the castle is gonna go out and probably kill a deer or a boar or a fox or something. But what exactly is Sir Gawain supposed to win <laughs> in the castle all day with the Lord's wife? <laughs> And sure enough, the Lord's wife is in Sir Gawain's bedchamber, wooing him and trying to get him to, you know, pleasure her. And um, you'll just have to find out how all that works out. But there's like a lot of, um, there's a lot of this kind of interchange of like the, the Lord in the forest, like, you know, shooting arrows into a boar and spearing a, a boar and killing it. And Sir Gawain being in the bedchamber with his wife, with the Lord's wife back at the castle and the, uh, Sir Gawain is supposed to be this chivalrous knight who's supposed to respect women's honor. And of course, he's not going to be, you know, spearing her with any kind of uh, spikes or arrows if he's a uh, chivalrous knight and uh, respects her honor as a married woman. But again, in the Middle Ages, a lot of this sort of really intense, uh, uh, sort of like, uh, like an analogy or like a, a played out, like, you know, we're hunting a boar over here and we're in the Lord's bedroom chamber with his wife over here, you know, <laughs> like, you know, that's just the kind of plot things that go on in a middle, uh, in middle English or a medieval story. And, uh, so I won't give away any more of the, of the story there other than to say that the, the film is just a pleasure to watch just really, really well done. The lighting, the gloominess, the, uh, the brutal, some of the violence that takes place, very mystical uh, events happening with uh, really far out, like, um, you know, I, I just don't want to give it away. I, I, I tell you, go watch the movie. It's called The Green Knight. Okay, so let's, let's switch over to the other part of this video, which is really about the book. So the, the movie is based on this book called Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. And what's really interesting about this is that the book is written in the 1300s, the 14th century, right? Like seven, 800 years ago. And it's written in this archaic Middle English. And all the way from the time it was written, it was kept in a library for many years and it was never translated. And um, the only people who could really enjoy it were these really heavy duty, like nerd English scholars who I happen to kind of be one of them <laughs> and I have a lot of respect for them. So I'm joking calling them nerds, but um, they, only only those people were able to enjoy this so it was it was very like uh, literary and kind of intellectual and then in the 1960s this lady here M maria boroff she translates this into you know contemporary english and all of a sudden all of the people like me who are into medieval literature can actually access this thing and it's really fascinating the way it's written i just want to give you a look at some of the text it's, it's these long, like, 20-line sort of 
uh, alliterative uh, kind of, they're not really poems, they're more like a narrative. And then at the end of each one, there's this little thing here, it's called a barrel and wheel, I think. And it, it kind of summarizes the paragraph. And then you go into another paragraph. And the entire book is, is written in this form where you have these long sort of paragraphs that explain the action and what's happening. And then this barrel and wheel thing at the end that, that kind of gives you a little rhymy thing that summarizes it. So it's pretty cool. Like, and the other thing is that it's written in what's called alliterative verse. So, you know, as you can, I'll give you an example here. So here's one of the paragraphs where Sir Gawain is in the bedchamber and the Lord of the castle's wife is coming to him and kind of wooing him and kind of flirting with him. And she says to him, good morning, Sir Gawain, said that gay lady, a slack sleeper you are to let one slip in. Now you are taken in a trice, a truce we must make, or I shall bind you in your bed, of that be assured, thus laughing lightly that lady jested. So like what happened here? A woman walked into this guy's bedroom and said like, we have to have a special truce or I'm gonna tie you up. But what you'll notice is like in this line, a slack sleeper you are to let one slip in. And they do that on every line. There's always like three words that start with the same letter. And the sound is repeated like here, thus laughing lightly that lady jested. Good morning, good lady, said Gwain the Blythe. Be it with me as you will, I am well content. For I surrender myself and sue for your grace. And that is best, I believe, and behooves me now. So <laughs> the whole book is written like this. And it's actually kind of fun to read it. And a couple things going on here. One, it was meant to be like told, like oral storytelling. And and it was very pleasant to hear these kind of repetitive, you know, S, 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 and G, 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 and C, 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 like these sounds over and over again. And it was very lyrical. It was probably made it a little bit easier to remember. It probably had a little bit of a sing-song kind of sound to it. And, and, it, and it's fun, right? But then the other thing is, is like I was saying, at the end of each paragraph, there's this little barrel and wheel thing. And on this particular paragraph, so, so, so here the lady slips into... Gwen's bedchamber and is kind of flirting around with him and they're making all these kind of double entendre sort of sexual bondage um you know my husband is out hunting and you're he's out there with his spear and you're here with your spear you know those kind of things so here's the little barrel and wheel paragraph at the at the end of this and the the lady of the castle says to Sir Gawain my body is here at hand your each wish to fulfill, your servant to command, I am and shall be still. So it's like really like blatant sexually, but nothing like really like explicit in the words. So it's all this sort of like visual and hinted at kind of stuff going on there. And, and again, it's not all like sexual, but it's there's a lot of hunting and a lot of traveling and a lot of questing and a lot of... Um, you know, betrayal and violence and like mystery and uh, the supernatural throughout the entire story. And like, I just want to tell you these things about the story because, but I won't, because I don't want to, I don't want to ruin the plot for you. But I think if you look around, you'll see like all the major newspapers, The Guardian, The New York Times, uh, Rolling Stone, you know, Newsweek, uh, The Los Angeles Times uh, have reviews of this movie and they're all calling back to the, to the book which was written in the 1300s. And it's, again, it's a wonderful story. Um, Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. And it, like I said, it involves these two main kind of plots. There's the beheading game and there's the exchange of winnings, which is two things you have to see kind of as you go through it. I highly recommend reading the book, watching the movie. I think I was really able to really see a lot of what was going on in the movie because I had read the book and I knew the story. And it, it's not an easy read. Like, you know, it's got all that alliteration and this poetic sort of language. But it, the book is only 50 pages. And the uh, another thing about the movie, the movie's like two and a half hours long. You could probably read the book in less time than it takes to watch the movie. And the cool thing is in the movie, 
the uh, the director of the movie takes liberty with the plot and he kind of changes things around. He's got a witch in there, Morgana Le Fay, who was the, you know, the, I think he, I think she was like the the aunt or somebody of or the sister of King Arthur, and she turned out to be this very witchy kind of mysterious woman back then in the Middle Ages. So she makes a, she's very much present throughout the story, and there's a lot of like kind of special effects, and again a lot of supernatural. Uh, you know, there's like witches and giants and people being beheaded. So, so very cool. Sir Gawain and the Green Knight is the book, and the Green Knight is the name of the movie that's out now. Highly recommended. So before we wrap up, I do want to mention that I. And Malcolm Torres, the host of the Sea Stories and Science Fiction podcast, as well as here this Sea Stories and Science Fiction uh, YouTube channel. So, you know, make an effort to hit the like button and leave me a comment if you're familiar with this story, if you have any recommendations, if you want to chastise me for any of my comments. Definitely appreciated and encouraged. And I'm looking for you. And please be looking for me out there on Instagram. Twitter, uh, Facebook, I'm on Goodreads, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm even on like Reddit and like every other place you could imagine. So looking to meet up with you out there in cyberspace. Thanks and bye now.